Just to the feeling it's over I wanna pray Because I play football. No. I'm not the one who gives off curry powder. Oh, you love our curry, but you can go there to eat them. No, My name's Rubal Ahmed. I live in Drum Street. It's near Euston Station in central London. My name is Jamal Mashed. I was born in Bangladesh, 1979. I've been in this country for um, nearly 13 years. Basically, we're surrounded by areas where there's tension, you know. So we, we only feel safe in our little area here. Street. Whenever we come out, there's a chance of us getting harassed, called names and even attacked. This is Jamal, he's in the OPR. We called ourselves OPR, one posse rules, because we thought, yeah, we're the only posse that ruled that area. You know, we thought we were hard. We, they, we look up to them, innit? I mean, if we, uh, anything we can't handle, you know, they're, they're like our, they're our brothers, simple. They're our brothers and they help us, innit? We're in a playground which is in St James Gardens, in between um, Drum Street or on the side of Drum Street and Hampton Road. There's nowhere else to go, simple. Because I mean, it's the only like big open space in, in our area. But this is where we rang out. All these people here are my Adrians, which means friends. All of them are local. Because of all the tension in the area, we hang around in groups. Because if we hang around on our own, there's a chance of us getting attacked. Um, I met at my friend's house, Shwab. Um, he's been attacked by white boys and this is seriously battered before, so I'm just going to call him and hopefully he'll come down. Can you tell Shreb to come down? <coughs> yeah, Shreb. Go yeah, crazy. Yeah. What's up, hey, Shreb? It's going in, man. Huh? It's going in. Who's been? Ah, nothing, man. Eh? Yeah? Cool. I'm munching it where I can see ya. Well, my, my name is Shreb. Mia and I was born in this country but I originate from Bangladesh. It was it was May twenty second. I was apparently I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well me and me and my mates we just crossed the road. And like, and like, we heard all these people shouting. And like, we looked everywhere and we looked on that side and we saw white boys coming towards us. And like, one of my mates shouted out, white boys. Then I saw them coming at me. So I thought, hey, they mean, they mean business. So I ran. I was running here as fast as, I, as fast as I can to get to my house. 
which I couldn't. And I could only hear him saying, you know, shouting, shouting out racial abuse. And when I got got around the corner, I heard him getting closer and closer. He just took a shot at my, at my head. They were the blows that I could feel the most, but the kicks couldn't feel them, and that like, everything went all black. My bedroom sees out to Hampstead Road. So I see Hampstead Road as a boundary line, you know. On, the, on my side of Hampstead Road, that's where we feel safe. And the other side of Hampstead Road is the Robert Street Spark area. We don't, well, we don't feel safe, but you know, we do walk through there. But you know, we, we're always in doubts, looking behind our backs and all that. I mean, there's a certain urge for them to look out for Asian and Bengali people. I mean, it's, uh, we feel that, that, like that area is violated against us, you know, that we can't go there because we might get beaten up. Um, we're in Samuel Lifko, front of Samuel Lifko Club. Um, that's where the white boys use the club there. And, you know, that's where all the hang about and everything. I don't go to this club because there's always fights and, you know, so mostly the white people use this club. Cause we we don't really go, cause we know we're gonna get trouble there, and everything. Um, we're in the Regent's Park estate. Um, this is where I used to be used to live before, about eight months ago, and that's where my house got broken. About 20 to 25 white youths were hanging around as usual every day on that wall there. They always used to sit around there. And you know, I used to always come round. I didn't bother looking at them. They used to like spit on the floor, or you packy, this and that. I just used to ignore them. Um, that night, I didn't come home because I knew that I'm gonna have trouble. So I stayed at my sister's flat, and then my older brother was living there. So he phoned and said the house is smashed. So I came down. I checked out, and all I see big holes on the windows, you know. So I'm thinking, it's like, I was stubborn, I didn't know what to say, you know. And then, you know, we just, it was very sad, you know, because I was just thinking, if my mum was there, I don't know what would have happened, you know, I'd probably go crazy or something, you know what I'm saying? So basically, I've been forced out of my house. You know, it's very sad. One day it might happen to them and they'll feel it how it is. Um, it's not worth talking about the police because they'd never done nothing, you know, they didn't bother asking me what happened or anything, you know, so I just left it as that, moved to Holborn. The next morning I started vomiting and lost my speech, couldn't say nothing. It, it was like, it was like it came one minute and then it went another another minute so it's like it was like that so my dad took me to the hospital and like anything i drank or i it came out again so i went i went to the hospital i could still walk and everything it was that i was just a bit bruised so um the lady asked my name but i couldn't answer and that was the weird thing I was thinking, I got attacked, but how come my voice is gone? So, um, they took me to a casualty. They put me up in a ward, and uh, they checked my head and everything. They took, they done brain scan, took a couple of pictures of my skull. And then, then I went to sleep that night, woke up next morning, and I see like there's couple of doctors all all around me and like, I was thinking, you know, what's going on? The bus stop just around the corner that way. Yeah, one of our mates got attacked one um, morning at the bus stop. 
So we did, this was on a Friday. So we decided on a Monday that we would really attack them back. So what we did was we like just divided two and sent the others round into the back of William Road. When time was right, they all came. We storm up, we did storm up into the road and they they flew off William Road. But they didn't realise that our boys were waiting at, on the top of William Road. We, we were um, there, yeah, about 10, 11 of us, we just walked behind the phone box, yeah, and we saw them chasing them, yeah, so we came down this way and stopped around here, yeah, and they saw us, yeah, they, they were shocked to see, you know, they were blocked both sides, they can't get out, yeah, so we just stormed into them. And they sort of got trapped in the middle and we gave them a good beating. And then on the way to school, the police stopped us near the three tower blocks, and this was just ridiculous, I mean, we didn't get caught or nothing, but we all got searched all about there were about 20 of us because the rest they flew off to school. But what I, what followed that was any Asian boy who was like from the from first years who was walking past was set, was told to stand up against the women be searched. And I think it ended up to be about 45, 50 of us. You know, there were so many. Practically most of South Camden Community School Asian boys were up against or were up against the wall in the three tower blocks just being searched. I noticed that I started losing the movement of my, of my right side and I couldn't lift my leg up no more. So I was thinking, you know, what's, what's happening? So then the lady, the nurse, explained to me that I, I have got a blood clot in my brain and, like, there's no way, uh, I mean, there, there is going to take, it's going to take a long time for me to get my speech and my movement back. So that's all I can remember. Summerstown, if you just go that way and straight on, you're in the like centre of Summerstown in the States, Summerstown States. A couple of my mates lived there. They was getting beaten up, getting rushed by boys when they go home, they wait near their house. The windows will get broken. You know, they just get beaten up, boys run, police don't do nothing about it, you just have to put up with it basically. We just avoid going that way. We just get trouble for no reason. Myself, not. I don't really go or anything. You know, there's no reason for me to go up there or anything. You know, I keep away. It's the little ones. They can't like fight 16 year olds like that because they're small. They're only about 12 like that. It's like us. We can't. We can't fight men, can we? Like if there's a lot of us here, yeah, we, we would, but they would outnumber us. Um, I used to go to South Camden Community School. But at that time, when I was there, you know, I never had problems or anything because Bengalis used to run to school, you know what I'm saying? But after our age group left, things started getting muddled up, you know, all the little ones couldn't go to school, this and that, they'd always got problems, you know, so it's always like tit for tat, you know. Uh, this is made for the leads out onto Evershaw Street, and, and we travel through here in the morning and on the way back to school, we are on the way back to school down to Street Street and through the three buildings and Pill Square. That's basically it. This is the place in where, this is the place where he got um, Russ Clyde in there, where they beat him up and everything. We're walking in a group, right? We're going home, you know, there's these little kids with us as well. We're walking through Mayford blocks, right? And um, all the white kids, right, surrounded us, right? We couldn't fight them, obviously, because they had knives and things like that. And we had little kids on us, right? So we had to run, you know? So we ran, right? And they are blocking all the entrance, you know? They were full of them, right? So some of us got away, right? But me and some other guys, right? Richard, we just got caught in it, right? And, you know, we couldn't do nothing, so we thought, you know, let's fight them, right? And they bottled us, you know? They were after clotted them. Yeah, they bottled me. And then I fell on the floor, they start bottling me many times as possible and then they, then they kick, right? Um, one of our teachers called the cops, right? They come after an hour. If it was a white kid they got him beaten up, they would come in two minutes. Three minutes? Three minutes, yeah. Obviously they will come in full speed, but they knew it was an Asian kid who got beaten up, so they come after an hour. You know, they take their time, they had their lunch and things like that. So they didn't give a bullshit about it, so I didn't really bother with the police. I just wanted to get them back myself, you get me? Pick their asses. Like he said, we had a lot of trouble, the white boys that used to come in. And they were well, basically, they used to look for the trouble and they, they think that we wouldn't give them it, but they used to get it. And end of the day, they got, you know, we gave them too much hustle that they left school and life's a much better place now that they've left, honestly. You know, because you don't get the trouble now. They 
the, it's not just Bengali kids out here. There's enough white boys, there's enough white girls, black girls, black boys. They're here for their studies, no one's here for the trouble. That's why there is no trouble in school. In school, I emphasise the fact there is no trouble. It's the area. If, if you took this school and you took it outside London somewhere, you'd see we'd probably be on the news every day for our top high results. But it's the area, it's the community the school's in, which the, makes it the down. The Sun accused the school of, you know, being the most violent school in the whole of, um, in the, you know, England. But, you know, the Sun was bullshitting, weren't they? You got a problem? Child. What do I want to do with my life? Hopefully I'll pursue something in English, something to do with English. Maybe some community studies, researching business. I wouldn't mind even being a teacher back at this school. Do you get me? Schools, but you didn't hear that. <laughs> 18 months. It's, it's been since the day I got attacked. I've got to have my medication, and that's for a couple of pills. I have to take once in the morning and once at night. I thought epileptic, you know, epilepsy would be cur curable, but when I found out it's not, then, you know, I was kind of shattered, shattered, heartbroken. But, you know, well, I've got to live through that. Go on, Shred, man, what do you miss? You must miss something. Well, first thing, I miss a ground with you, though, and I miss my football. Football, man, every man misses their football. <laughs> Even if you can't play, you miss your football. Everyone plays football, man. It's a boy's, it's a man's game, it's a man's yeah, world. <laughs> and we were supposed to make a team between B-Wag, the youth club, and Sammy Lift, the youth club. Basically, B-Wag was for Asians went to it, and Sammy Lift got a lot of bad people on it. But the white boys were too frightened to come down, you know. And basically, they never used to turn up. The organiser of the, the Denmark trip just gave them an ultimatum a certain time that if they don't turn up by this time, you know, they're not going to Denmark. And they didn't, and they didn't go to Denmark. So we were left with half a team, which were Asian, and, you know, we wanted to take a, a team which was mixed. So, so I, I knew some of, I knew some mates that lived in Summerstown, which were not into violent, which were not in the violent sector. And here we got um, So I brought them down. They were a bit hesitant at the first. You're not always like You know, I also got um, some of my black friends from Holloway, and they mixed in pretty easily. Rickon, I'm looking at you. I don't even find it funny. I'm looking at you, no trouble, no answering back. If you get fouled, you leave up to the referee. Now we're playing a church team, and it looks like it's going to be a walkover. About how many goals? I, have I, I estimate, I estimate five. Yeah, G has, G has had trials. I've had trials. We are good enough. And you see, GR, he, he thinks it's a racial thing now because you know he's had so many trials because he ain't been accepted by no club. People think that we cannot get them with people that are, that are, you know, the different colour, that are the opposite colour towards us. But we've, we've proven them wrong. We've proven them that we are prepared to communicate with them and we are prepared to build on our horizons. The people that say Drama Street is, is a gangster's area, they don't know jack about Drama Street, do you get me? Because if that was how, if that was the case here, yeah, then you wouldn't be seeing people like this around. They would be getting chased now. Right? The people that got a problem with us are the racist people and they need to sort their, they need to sort themselves out. You get me? And we know who they are. So obviously what do they expect? Us to greet them when they come through here. Um this is a toki. We um Put this on our head when we go to the mosque. It's in our religion that we cover our hair. Um, it goes on something like this, hopefully. That's how it goes on. Um, we go to the mosque to pray. Basically, the praying is for is for forgiveness. Is for all the sinful deeds that we've done. That's our local mosque, which we use regularly. Um, I do use it but not as often as I would like to have used it. It's basically the prayer times are not suitable for me because I miss all the prayers while I'm at school. 
If we're good and we follow our religion, then afterwards it will be good and relaxing for us after our death. And basically if we do sinful deeds and we're bad before death, then after death it will be bad for us. We will rot, burn in hell. Well, I'm not too religious. I wouldn't say I'm too religious. Like on Fridays, a Muslim has to do what a Muslim has to do. Go to the mosque, do his prayers, isn't it? Drummond Street is a very friendly area, you know. I, even if I do leave it, because I know I'll be back. You know, my friends, because this I've been brought up here, and you, I can't, you can't leave here. Yeah, I'll, I'll bear the memories for life for this place and all the incidents and everything that have happened. I'll bear this place for life, definitely. For me, I don't want to even live here. I would want to move. I would want to go somewhere where there's a strong community, where there's people can communicate with other each other, you know, mixed race, where there's a lot of things you can do with your own area than rather than going out. Well, for one thing, my parents are scared and some of my brothers and sisters and like there's not I mean I feel there's nothing I could do to regain the confidence that they used to have and I just hope one day you know they could regain that confidence back like we don't face racism just from the summer standpoint, from the police, from the council, from everyone basically. You know, we can't take it. What? We, we ain't gonna take it every time from everyone. That's not on. That's the only way these days around this area. The only way you could live is to fight back. But if you show yourself as an easy target, then okay. that's it, you're gone. Because that's why we fight back. That's the only way. We, if we don't have no faith in police. Because if we had faith in police, then we wouldn't fight, innit? We rely on the law, but there's no law for us. When we have to, that's when we fight. We don't go looking for trouble, but when trouble comes, we give trouble back. <laughs> We have to do something, because this is our yard, isn't it? We can't just let other people come in and do something to us. Achei <laughs> 